everyone, it is George Kuros and welcome back to another monthly highlight video for the Innovators Mindset podcast for the month of November 2021. In fact, this is actually going to be the last um, monthly highlight video because as we move forward, it's just going to be some highlights from the year. And uh, you're going to see some of the best advice, some of the best stories, some of the best strategies uh, being shared in the next little while. And I've been thinking a lot about like, if this is the last one of the year, you know, how am I going to end this, right? So I've just kind of been sitting here and I always kind of try to think of a little bit of story, a little bit of a idea, some maybe some inspiration. And one of the things that I've noticed when I'm looking back at some of these videos and, you know, hearing this is that I look very different from what I did at the beginning of the year. And as many of you know, I've lost uh, some significant weight and, uh, and it's not just that I've lost weight, but, you know, I think the audio sounds better, right? And sometimes, you know, things screw up. The audio, uh, you know, it doesn't work the way that I want it to. But overall, the audio is better. The video is better. And it's something that I've really tried to grow through this process. At first, when I did my first, um, when I first started this podcast, when I said, that, you know, I'm going to commit to this, I actually would go sit in my basement. I'd plug in. Uh, $10 mic into my phone and I would record and I was very nervous and uh, yeah I kind of look back at some of those things and wonder you know how they were and uh, I, as I got more into it it got better but I think it's not that I just got more into it I think that the obstacles of the last I don't know was it two years now year and a half whatever um, has forced me to become better and I think a lot of times when we look at these things uh, sometimes when negative things happen, it is an opportunity to grow through the process. And one of the things I love about recording this podcast is I can actually go back and look and see, you know, what, what was it like, you know, a year ago, um, six months ago and see, have I improved? Am I growing through this process? It's very humbling to be honest with you. But I, you know, I look at this time and it's really kind of, you know, the, the title of the podcast is The Innovator's Mindset. And I think about, do I model that through my actions? Do I look at these circumstances that are in front of me and try to figure out new and better ways of doing things and connecting with them? And I have loved not only seeing my growth physically, but my mental health, but also my learning, connecting with people that uh, I didn't know at all or people that I knew but I didn't know that well and got to learn from them and got to connect with them and so I always look at these opportunities I always try to figure out and I think sometimes it's way harder to do this how do we turn these obstacles into opportunities to do something different and I think this is kind of the whole premise of the innovators mindset podcast and if you've been listening um, you know whether it's uh, the mindset Monday podcast you know that's a theme uh, but if you've been listening, I've tried to do some new things. I try to change it up. And I think it's way better to change things uh, too early before change before things are changed to you. And that's something that I think about a lot. So just some final thoughts in this highlight video. And I just, I, you have no idea how much I appreciate that you're taking this time to listen. I know people are so overwhelmed. And right now, many of you are coming off a break or you're about to go on to a break had incredibly stressful years um, as as I have to be honest with you but I just I, that you spend time listening to this and maybe you spend time listening to this when you go to bed because maybe it's just like the perfect thing to fall asleep to because you know there's some podcasts I listen to that are like okay I'm gonna turn that podcast on boom go to sleep and hey whatever if I can get subliminal messages while you're sleeping that's cool too but um, just thanks for all you do thanks for being here thanks for being on this journey with me and I hope that I continue to grow next year um, in what I do, how I do it, and uh, my learning, because I think it's something that I want to do for myself, but also really important for me to, not only those I serve, but most importantly to me and my kids, that they see this because they'll be able to look back on this stuff one day and see that their dad was willing to get better as um, we went through this process. So thanks for being here. Thanks for listening. And welcome back to another monthly highlight video of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. Take care. The last question is also the question that you answered in 
the book because of a teacher. Now, I'm going to read the very first per, uh, paragraph. So the, the last question is, um, what advice would you give to your first year teacher self? I think this ties in beautifully. Um, we've all experienced significant moments in time that have transformed our perspectives and altered the paths we walked. These significant moments often engender a multitude of feelings that encourage us to make choices that impact the direction of our lives. These moments can be difficult to see in real time because we become so consumed with the experience itself. Awesome first paragraph. And you can read more and because of a teacher. So <laughs> just, just look for it. You'll see in the links below. So Lauren, go, go a little bit deeper into that. So like you think about yourself as a first year teacher, especially with all the learning that's happening right now, what advice would you give to yourself? You know, if you can go back in time. Gosh, um, there's so much advice. And, and when you asked me to write this chapter, I kept thinking about how can I capture everything I want to say in one chapter? Mm -hmm. um, because to be honest with you, I feel like the way I lead and the way I have been on this educational journey is I look at every year as a first year. Mm -hmm. You know, that's how I stay on the cutting edge of best practice. That's how I become better. That's how I can elevate others and make them better. So what are some of the things I think about? Always keep kids at the heart of decision making. That's why we're here. It always comes back to kids, right? Um, so we can differ in our perspectives. We can have different approaches to teaching and learning or management of the classroom or building a classroom community. Um, but if kids are at the center of the conversation and, and you use the children to guide you, um, in everything you do, uh, you really can't go wrong. You know, get to know your learners. That's another piece of advice. Um, you know, yes, there's a curriculum to cover. There's a scope and sequence. But the significant learning happens when you're connecting to the hearts and minds of children. They want to know that you care about them. Um, when they know you care about them, they will work for you. Mm -hmm. And in meaningful ways, too. So that would be another one. Um, Seek out professional learning opportunities. That's another big one. I think when I was a younger teacher, I used to kind of wait for them to come to me. Like, oh, my, you know, my school district will provide those opportunities for me. And that happens. Yes, yeah, school districts do that. But because we have different learners in front of us every year and we work with different colleagues um, and things are, are constantly evolving in, in the educational landscape that we live in, Mm -hmm. um, seek those opportunities out. You know, if you know your learners and you, you're able to notice and name their needs, then find those opportunities that are going to benefit you and your students. That looks different for everyone, just like success looks different for everyone. That's another piece of advice. Don't compare yourself right. to other people. Right. Um, Theodore Roosevelt said, you know, comparison is the thief of joy. Once you start doing that, um, your mind starts running wild. It's mm -hmm. like you look at the glass half empty. What is it that I'm not doing instead of all the amazing things that you are doing? Um, use the room to share mm -hmm. ideas. Don't be afraid to ask for support. Find that network of support. There are always going to be people around you who have amazing strengths and will be there to support you. Get to know that community. Get to know who you can go to for help. And also, even if you find an interaction with someone who you're around to be unfavorable, mm -hmm. maybe you're not enjoying that, that's something to learn from too. Right. So capitalize on those moments as well. Uh, I know that you're doing great things. Your district is doing incredible things. But I guarantee you, just like every person, you go if you can go back to your first year of teaching, there's things that you say like, oh, I can't believe I used to do that, right? Probably a major pain story for me is probably one of those stories I told out loud that maybe I shouldn't have. But anyways, if you look back at, if you look back at your uh, first year of teaching, like what advice would you give to yourself? Wow, first year of teaching. Um, yeah, that was that was quite a show. Um, um, and probably not a good show. Right, right. <laughs> so yeah. Um, you know what? If I were to give myself uh, some advice as a as a starting teacher, one of the things I would say is um, don't take yourself too seriously. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think that's one of the things that uh, we do, especially when we start off in in the profession, is um, that we feel like we've got to be this person who knows everything and can do everything. And and um, you know, any question that's asked by a student, we should have the answer for, or at least we should be able to point them in the right direction. 
and usually it's more of of, of the of the former, which is have the right. right, answer. right. Um, um, and you know, we we don't open ourselves up to just kind of being human and and showing students that we are we are human. We make mistakes. We don't know everything. We we're growing and we're learning every day, just like they're supposed to be growing and learning every day. And so I that's where that whole taking yourself way too seriously comes from. Um, and I think in my in my first. I'd say first couple of years of teaching, that's probably one of the things that I, I did that I, if I could do all over again, I would, I would definitely change and take myself so seriously. Um, you know, um, I do a lot of laughing at myself now. Um, and quite frankly, I, you know, I encourage that with my staff, you know, yes, I'm the leader of a school district, but guess what? I'm just as goofy as everybody else. I make just as many mistakes as everybody else. Um, I say just as many stupid things as everybody else. Um, and you can call me on it. Um, yeah. um because guess what? I'm going to call you on it too. And that's how we're going to build relationship with one another. Can't take you, we can't tell, take ourselves too seriously because then it doesn't help us be the authentic self that we need to be for kids to truly get something from us. And that, that actually like, you know, talking to you, this is one of the reasons I wanted to do the podcast with you is because you're just, it was so easy to connect with you that day. We had talked for a while. Like we were actually, Oh yeah, we, we have to kind of go on with this event. I remember that kind of specifically. Um, but it is that nature just where you can joke at yourself because I think sometimes when like, I, like sometimes when I'm, you know, at events, I'm like, hi, oh, like, can I, can I crack a joke here? It's going to make everyone feel better. But like, and I knew like I actually made a little joke about, you know, how superintendents are just taking three hour breaks kind of thing. Right. And you, and you were like you were dying. I remember watching you laugh because I kind of looked over. I'm like, OK, am I going to be in trouble? So but do you, and that that actually does connect you to people. And the, the thing that I appreciate about you saying this specifically is because you are a superintendent. Right. Like you have you have moved. And I think. I think for me, I know this about you. I know you don't take yourself too seriously, but I know you take your work very seriously. And those are still, those are different things, right? And it's mm -hmm. kind of like, yeah, we should, this is a joy, like enjoyable place. We get to work with kids. Like how awesome is that, right? Like you just kind of having fun, like where I could do, you know, as I said earlier, where I could do major pain and they think it's the greatest <laughs> thing ever because they, they know it's a joke. So Sean, that was awesome. I gotta give it, I got, I got everything. Thank you. Thank you. I got that idea of asking for feedback. I think Melissa had actually posted something about it. And so I took it from her. And then like mm -hmm. the very next day, I was like, I have to do this. And so it was very informative. <laughs> and, and, you know, fourth grade is a right. lot different than pre-K. They're going right. to, and I even said, you don't have to put your name on this. And they were like, oh, okay, bet. And so I got a lot of good most of them was very it was very kind and polite and then there was there was one that said i think you talk too much mm -hmm. and i was like mm, oof and so and i it would have been so easy for me to been like okay rude you know and, but so we from there we ended up going to a self-paced blended learning model and so i'm like i'm not I'm talking as much anymore and so I did a lot of research into that. And that's one thing that Melissa and Jenny have been giving a, me a lot of good feedback on because that's been my goal this year. And so every time we have this book chat, you know, they're always asking me, how's it going? How's your goal? Is there anything that I can do to help? And so it's been, they've been so helpful in this, you know, kind of risky journey that I've been taking. And they've been giving me so many, so much great feedback and ideas and so it's just been, and it's, you know, you talked about connecting with people outside the district, connecting with people inside of this district, but then also connecting with people inside of your school that you usually wouldn't, like I teach fourth grade and Jenny is a friend, but we don't really ever talk about what's going on in our classroom. And so getting to be able to get her feedback as well from someone who is in our school has been super mm -hmm. helpful as well. Yeah, and that's like, that's one of my, that's always, I, I talk about this quite a bit, one of my biggest pet peeves in education is how we like just totally covet people from other schools, from other districts, from around the world. And then we kind of downplay our own staff. And I think that to me has always been something that I've struggled with. And I'm sure, you know, all of us, and I, I think not just all of us in this space right now, but, you know, when I say all of us, I'm talking education, have maybe felt that where we felt like discounted by some of our own staff. We've 
felt not appreciated because it kind of, you know, we, we often treat, treat strangers better than we treat people that we know really well. Right. And I think that that to me is something that I hope we can really kind of focus on because we already know education kind of gets a negative light in some media circles uh, in a space, but it doesn't really help when we don't, when we see people every day and we don't celebrate them or, you know, talk about their accomplishments. There is this quote that I'm known for, uh, this idea of make the positives so loud that negatives are almost impossible here. And I get yep. crapped on for this quote all the time. They're like, oh, you don't think there's negatives in the world? It's like, I'm like, no, nobody's saying that. So yep. like, if you look at the last little while, there's a lot of crap that's happened in our world, you know, all this other stuff. I do not have time for people that complain about everything all the time. It's not about not addressing negatives. It's about finding a way forward. Yeah. That is what I've always advocated for. And so being very clear on this, I think part of it too is it is identifying, you know, things that are not working. It is identifying, you know, problems that we're having in our world, in our schools and, and things like that. But I we all we all know, let's pretend let's not pretend we don't. We all know people that got a problem with every single solution. No matter what you're doing, it's wrong, right? We we've all encountered that in our lives. And I just don't have time for that because I, I we need to move forward, right? Because like, as y'all said, this is about our kids, right? And the, the thing that I've always focused on, my my job is to help kids find a path to success in a way that's meaningful to them, not to define what success is. They have to figure that stuff out themselves. We, we give them the tools to do that. But the thing that I want to give as my like one thing to do uh, is based on this conversation, surround yourself with awesome people. When you're encouraging people, teachers take risks mm -hmm. what do, what happens when you if you encourage that what happens when it doesn't go the way that like some like the the concept of risk is that sometimes we don't know what the end point is and it could be not as good as we want so what how do you get people to a space where they take some risks things don't work out and then they feel in a space that they can actually continue to take risks after that fact i make sure i work with them um on that, on the risk and what went wrong. And I try to foster a relationship or a trusting relationship where they can tell me when something went wrong um, or look to me to just talk something through. You know, sometimes people come and talk to you. They don't necessarily need your input or suggestion until they talk it through and they come to their own answers. Mm -hmm. uh, a really good example, we were doing a book club um, among faculty and one of the teachers gave students, you know, you hear all about 20% time and everything. Yep. Um, and it was the empower book that we were, we were doing. Yep. And so every Friday she gave her class, that class on that day to work on anything that interested them under her subject. She taught health, anything that interested them under her subject, just to tie it back to the, to the curriculum. And then they would present on it afterwards. So she had everything from your trifold boards to PowerPoints, to a board game, things that kids created um, under these topics. And so I remember distinctly her sitting with me after and she rolled in this cart um, with all these projects and boards and stuff on it and everything. She rolled it and she goes, okay, so I tried this and it was awesome. She said, but I never thought about how I'm going to actually grade it. Right. So she had no way to grade because she had some that went way above board and then right. she had others that just kind of hit the minimum requirements, but still prove that they learned and they showed their learning. Mm -hmm. So we had to sit down and have a conversation about um, two things. One, how was she going to complete this issue with um, assigning a grade to the students? Because there's got to be a grade assigned and entered yeah. and how those discussions would go with the students. And then we discussed about, OK, so how do you make it better next time? Because you've got this. You're saying they were engaged. You're saying they were learning. You're saying that they showed you their learning. Mm -hmm. Isn't that what it's all about? So so how do we make that better next time? And by better in this scenario, which is a lot of times what this has to do with, better in this scenario meant her being more comfortable with how she was going to assess what they received for a mark, which is a whole other conversation right. between assessment and grading. Yeah, and that's one actually like what you talked about is one of the reasons I really push on this notion of evidence-informed practice, not data-driven, data-informed. And I think the the terminology, the the definition of data and evidence is actually very similar, but the perception of it is data is like everything I can like measure easily, right? Whereas evidence, like I'm sure there is actually incredible evidence of learning and that teacher could provide that evidence through that process. But a lot of times the way we, 
actually, I actually believe this is pretty much all the time. The way we assess drives our teaching, not the other way around. And so sometimes we like say, oh, teachers shouldn't teach the test. But then all we talk about is what the test scores are. And like, well, that's why they're teaching the test because that's all you focus on. And then you have a beginning of the year, you know, call to action about improving test scores. And then you're like, why are teachers teaching the test? And like, because that's all you talk about is the test scores, right? So I think that evidence of learning is is really important. So I appreciate you making that connection. And so um, the, the second question I have when we talk about risk taking, I'm really big on A, encouraging people to take risks and, and B, then modeling. And so people can see that as an administrator, as a leader, we take risks ourselves. So like when you think about your practice, because it's it's super easy for a boss to say, take risks, who has no concern <laughs> yeah. of losing their job, right? Yeah. Like when you're the boss, like who cares? So as a, as a principal, like how do people know that you're taking risks in stuff that you're doing that maybe you're trying? I actually have an idea of that based on just stories that you share, but like, is there something that comes to your mind when you, when you talk about that practice? Um, I model just about anything I ask them to do. So if we're like our faculty meetings are different, they're not your typical faculty meetings. We do walking faculty meetings. We have discussions about stuff. And if whatever I ask of them, I always tell them that I go first. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'll, I'll do whatever I'm asking of them first. The other way I do that is I'm, I'm usually trying different things. Um, whether it's what I'm trying with communication strategies, newsletters, tech, anything like that. Right. And I will model it with them. So if I want them to try a new piece of tech, I put something together and use something with that tech to either just to um, present it to them or to send something out. Um, when I model and, and, you know, taking risks, right? Failure is part of taking risks. Yep. Um, when I do that or make a mistake, I'm the first one to raise my hand and say, hey, OK, look, so I got to walk this back because I made this mistake um, because I was trying this. So I'm going to I'm going to try something different next time. Um, and do that. So I make sure I make sure modeling is super important um, or or central to how I ask them to do things. I, and I, and I, I so appreciate that. And I think it's actually something that should trickle down in classrooms, right, as well. Mm-hmm. So when I work with administrators, one of the things I say is like, hey, there's some things that I'm probably saying today that you're not comfortable with, you're struggling with, you might agree with me, but you 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 don't, you're not necessarily there yet, right? Go talk to your staff about that. Say like, hey, I saw this guy from Canada. Here's something that was really kind of like I was struggling with, but I need to kind of figure this out. So I'm going to kind of go through that process and 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 talk them through that. Like show that you don't know everything, that you're trying to figure some stuff out, but encourage your staff to do the same thing. Like I, I like if you as a staff member, as a teacher, go in a classroom, you're in my PD session. I encourage staff to say like, hey, if you don't agree with something I'm saying, if you feel uncomfortable, if you want to try something new, talk to your kids and say like, hey, I was just doing this PD day. This is something that's new to me. I'm kind of unsure about it. I want to start maybe trying this because what are you modeling the kids, right? You're really modeling to kids what you're expecting from them. You're expecting them to try things they don't know. If kids walked into their classrooms knowing all the things we're going to teach them, then they don't need to come in. Right. And I think part of that is, do they see you modeling that risk? Do they see you taking that risk yourselves? And uh, one of the things I always say is like risk is risk. I think people can connect it to um, inherent, inherently dangerous things. Right. We're like putting kids at harm. And I'm, that's not, I'm not that's not the risk we're talking about. What, right. How I define risk is moving from a comfortable average in pursuit of an unknown better. What an incredible blessing it is for you to be listening to this today. Uh, not just because of how much I appreciate you taking the time to be here, to listen to this conversation, but because we have this access, we have this ability to learn from one another, to think that I'm sitting in an office, you know, in my home in Alberta, Canada, and you are wherever you are. Uh, We have listeners all over the world. It's such an incredible thing. And And I think that's something that we need to really celebrate, need to take advantage of. But I also think about how we tend to get really excited about people across the world, people sharing their ideas. But a lot of times we don't necessarily necessarily celebrate the people that are closest to us, the people that um, are across the hallway from us. And I'll give you an example uh, from my own time in education. I remember at one of my schools uh, where I was teaching at, they would do this uh, little award ceremony every single year to, to celebrate a teacher. And they did basically the teacher of the year. And one year 
it was, uh, they were doing this conversation. And I was listening and I had a really good year. I was really proud of the work that I was doing. And I remember them talking and kind of describing the teacher that was about to be celebrated. And I'm thinking, I'm going to win. I'm going to win this, this award. And I was really excited about it. And then they actually gave it to someone else on my staff. And the first thing that I thought was not good for them or they deserved it. The first thing I thought was, that should have been me. Why wasn't it me? And I look back on that and I think of that teacher. And to be honest with you, he's no longer with us today. And he was an incredible teacher. He's an incredible mentor. He, he was an amazing educator and I looked up to him. And I'm not necessarily saying he wasn't deserving. I wasn't, I, none of that stuff. But instead of actually looking at all the things that he contributed to the school, all the things that he did, the first thing I thought about was why couldn't this be me? Why couldn't this, you know, and I, I felt a little resentment towards him at that time. And I, I think a lot of times when we point to this, we always point to like somebody had this towards me or maybe someone didn't else appreciate my work. But I think it's really important that I shared that story because it was like me having that feeling about someone else. We always point to maybe the negatives in other people, but then do we take a look and say like, are we being that person? Are we being that same feeling? And instead of like going up to him and celebrating him and giving him like a real, I probably congratulated him to be honest with you, but it was like probably like, hey, way to go, you know, made some like sarcastic comment. I didn't really authentically celebrate that moment. And, you know, later I did. And this is a person that I learned a ton from person that I looked up to and I think a lot about that I think a lot about other instances where I felt the same way where people didn't necessarily appreciate me in the places that I worked and what that did for my confidence what that did you know maybe some uh, resentment to maybe some of the places I worked because I didn't feel that but I also have to be honest that I was that person to other people too and are are we that to each other it is so amazing that we can celebrate people across the world, but it doesn't mean anything if we can't pe celebrate people across the hallway. <laughs>